Echo's ultimate in League of Legends might just be one of the most iconic abilities in the game. It's flashy, it's fast, but underneath all that style is a clever bit of game design. So how does it work exactly? Well, that's what we're going to find out in today's episode of Games Dissected. Welcome back everyone to another episode of Games Dissected. I am a huge fan of the TV show Arcane, so as a tribute to the show, I will be dissecting Echo's ultimate ability in League of Legends and show you how to recreate it in Unreal Engine. My pasts have a way of catching up. When Echo's ability Chrono Break is ready, an after image spawns that follows Echo's path four seconds in the past. And when the ability is activated, Echo rewinds his own time by teleporting back to the after image's location, putting him where he was four seconds ago, and damaging any enemies in his area. So the first question is, how does this after image work and keep track of Echo's past position? To rewind time and display an after image, the game must keep recording the past positions of Echo at all times in a four second window. This means that we are dealing with data that changes over time. And the perfect data structure to store this would be a circular buffer. Let me explain how this works. Since we want to store four seconds worth of position data, and let's say we want to update this data every 0.1 seconds, that means we need an array that contains 40 entries, which is four divided by 0.1. Then every 0.1 seconds, we remove the oldest position from the beginning of the array and then add the current position to the end of the array. And we keep repeating this process. Now we have an array or a circular buffer in this case that continuously keeps track of the last four seconds of position data. Now let's implement this in Unreal Engine. For this demonstration, I'm using the top-down template, and I created my own Unreal Manny Echo character with custom animations that I got from Mixamo, but I had to modify a bit to fit my needs. And of course, Echo is not complete without his signature sword bat that I got from Fab. You can, of course, use your own characters, but if you want to follow along with my assets, the full project files will be available to download on my Patreon, as well as an extended version of this tutorial where I go over everything in detail. Now let's start with the position tracker. For this, we will create a separate actor component and call it position tracker. And if you don't know what an actor component is or why we use them, check out my detailed video on components in Unreal Engine. For now, this component just needs one variable, and that's the position data. This will be our circular buffer, and it will be an array of transforms, not just an array of vectors, because we need both location and rotation, and you'll see why in a bit. Then we just need to fill this array with our initial data. So we'll create a function to do that, and this function first needs to get the size of the array, uh, which if you recall, I was explaining earlier, we need to divide how far back in time we want to go, by how frequently we want to update this array. Then we just loop over it and fill the array with the current transform of the player. Then we need another function to update the position data, which is really easy. Just like I explained, it just removes the first element from the array and adds the current transform to the end of the array. And now we just need to call these functions on begin play. We initialize the position data. We only need to call this once. And we call the update function multiple times on a loop every 0.1 seconds. And just to visualize this, we can add a debug sphere every time we call the update function. And with this, we can now add the position tracker component to our player character. And now we can see a sphere that starts following us four seconds in the past. Amazing. Now the question is, how do we replace the sphere with an actual character that's going to follow us? The after image is just another character, using the same mesh and animations as Echo, but with a translucent material to make it look like a ghost. To recreate this in Unreal Engine, we will simply create a new character class with the same mesh, weapon, animations, and movement settings as the main character, 
and we will change both the character and the weapon materials to use this cool translucent material that I created, which we will also be using for the trail effect in just a second. Now our after image character is ready to be used. So how do we do that? Well, the position tracker component will spawn this after image on begin play and then store its reference as a variable. Now we just need to move this character. And to do that, we will use the tick function to apply movement input on this reference of the after image towards the first location in our circular buffer, which we know is the location that Echo was four seconds ago. And then as the array updates, Echo will keep moving to a new location. Here it is very important for the after image and the main character to have the same movement settings so that they move at the same speed. Then the final step to complete this after image is to add the trail effect behind the main character. For this, I'm using the same material I used on the after image, and I created a very simple Niagara trail effect and set its duration to four seconds, which means it will always connect the after image to the character because we know they are always four seconds apart. And now to display this trail effect, we just spawn the Niagara particle system after spawning the after image and attach it to our player character. And this is what it looks like. Amazing. Now that we've implemented the position tracker and the after image, the last thing left to do is to implement the ability activation. And this is the most exciting part of the entire video. First, let's take a closer look at what actually happens when Echo activates his Chrono Break ability. After a short casting period and animation, an indicator is spawned at the target location as well as a trail of after images along the path that Echo took in the last 4 seconds. Then Echo dashes to the target location while invisible and then appears with a cool animation and explosion effects damaging all enemies nearby. Now, that's a lot of things happening in less than a second. So let's see how we're going to do that. Let's start simple by just teleporting the player to the target location. To do that, in our player blueprint, we will create a new event. Let's call it teleport begin, store the current transform value as a variable, and then create a timeline that just goes from 0 to 1 in 0.2 seconds. And if you don't know what a timeline is, it's just a component that allows you to modify a value over time. In this case, a float value from 0 to 1. Then on update, I will lerp from the current transform value of the player to the target transform, which is the first element in our circular buffer, and set that as our new transform. It's a pretty simple teleport that takes me from my current transform value to the target transform value in 0.2 seconds smoothly. Then when we press R on the keyboard, let's call our teleport begin function. And let's see how this looks. Great, this works, but the after image and the trail effect are still there when we teleport. So we need to deactivate the position tracking functionality when we activate the ability. So in my position tracker component, I'm gonna create two events for activate and deactivate tracking. And activate tracking will just do everything we're currently doing on begin play. And deactivate tracking will do the opposite. So it will just stop the timer and destroy the visual effects. Then we just need to call deactivate tracking right before we teleport. Great, this looks better, but now we need some visual effects. I created this very simple decal to spawn at the target location. And right after calling teleport begin, I'll just spawn my decal at that location. Also, let's briefly hide the player mesh and spawn like a visual effect in its place. I'm using this effect I got from the Feng Mao Paragon asset, but I just made it green. And now let's see how this looks. Excellent, now it's starting to look like a teleport, but it's not a teleport back in time without the trail of after images. So how does that trail work exactly? For this, I created three poses from my walk animation so I can randomly choose between them for my static actor image. Then we need to create a basic actor class with just a skeletal mesh, similar to our after image character. 
Then on begin play, I will set the skeletal meshes animation to be a random pose from the three poses that I created. And finally, let's set its lifespan to something short like 0.7 seconds so it destroys itself after that duration. Great, now we have our after image character, but how do we spawn it along the player's path? Well, for that, we need to sample our position data array. And sampling just means we take one element from the array, skip a few, then take another, and repeat that process. So I created a function in the position tracker component to return this sampled array. It's just some basic math, so you can pause if you want to read it. And then I call this function in my player blueprint and loop over the samples and spawn the static after image at each transform value. Now this is starting to look super cool. But nothing is ever cool without animations. So I modified two Mixamo animations to get the casting animation and the teleport end animation. That's when the player arrives at the target location. So let's plug those in. We do the cast animation montage first before anything else. Then when the teleport ends, we play the teleport end montage. And let's see how it's looking now. All right, it's cool, but actually in League of Legends, when Echo appears after the teleport, he is hovering in the air for some time. So let's add 100 to the Z value of the teleport location and disable gravity for some time to keep him in the air. Now let's take a look. All right, so this is really looking good now, but... We need more visual effects. All right, so I took the explosion effect from the starter pack and I made it green and removed the smoke from it. And I combined it with the teleport start that we're using from the Feng Mao assets. And I put all of these inside a green bubble. So I spawn them here when the bubble starts and the bubble then expands to be our explosion shockwave. And it looks something like this when it's all put together. Now we just need to spawn this uh, after our teleport ends. This is getting a bit messy, so let's move all of this to a separate event. And over here, before playing the montage, we will spawn our bubble and then just call teleport end on finished. And now let's see how this looks. Perfect, this looks incredible. Now the final thing to tie all of this together is sound effects. All right, so I got this sound from freesound.org, modified the pitch a bit to sound like this, and that's gonna be our casting sound. I also got this sound from freesound.org, combined it with this sound from the engine, modulated them and mixed them together to create this super satisfying sound. And that's gonna be our explosion sound. So the casting sound I just put in the montage and the explosion sound I added to our bubble. And now let's see how it all looks like with some sounds. Oh, really satisfying. One more time. In slow motion. Of course, the sounds are in slow motion. Lovely. All right, and now we're ready for the final demo where we can try out the ability on actual patrolling enemies. But before we do that, I just wanted to say that if you want to download the full project files, including all the source code, the custom animations, the custom visual effects, everything, as well as an extended version of this tutorial where I go over everything in detail on how to implement it with additional functionality, this is all available on my Patreon, as well as a lot of other things. So please check it out and you'll be helping me and the channel a lot by doing so. Now, let's start our demo. Let's start with a quick reminder of the original ability from League of Legends. And now, our own recreation of it.
And there you have it, Echo's Chrono Break, dissected and recreated in Unreal Engine. This video was so much fun to make, and it took me a lot longer than expected, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. I hope you enjoyed it as well and you learned something new. If you did, please consider giving a like, subscribing, or leaving a comment. It really does help the channel out a lot. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.